let's start. We are in Leviticus chapter 13. Now, Leviticus chapter 13 speaks about a very peculiar disease. But behind this discussion, I think I want to explore something which a friend of mine was discussing with me about some of these things. Whether the children of Israel, particularly Aaron and his children, uh, may have acquired medicinal knowledge. Okay, that, that much you have put at the back of your mind. Because as they went along, uh, the priests themselves, in this particular case, is to determine whether uh, a peculiar illness or disease has actually occurred or not. So let, let's begin, and then you bear that in the back of our minds. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When a man has on the skin of his body a swelling, uh, a swelling would be like a, I don't know, how, how would you put it? Let's see. A swelling would be this. If this is your hand, and a swelling would be a bump that will come up. So this is a swelling. Okay, It is an elevation uh, above the skin itself. So this is the skin and this is the elevation. Okay, so that would be a swelling. It's something that rises up uh, above the skin. So if that is the case, uh, this is there's another word here called a scab. A scab is also a lesion. Uh, could look like a boil. Right? It could look like a boil, whether it can erupt or not. Right, It looks like a boil. This is an elevation. Or a bright spot. Now, a bright spot is basically a spot on the skin, uh, a white patch. Because in this chapter, we are discussing something which is very unusual. Uh, we, I have never seen it before, only in pictures. Uh, but this, this is a pe peculiar way of describing a couple of things. There is a, a disease called leprosy. And these are the ways that it is describing uh, on the skin a swelling, a boil, or a bright patch, a bright spot, a white patch that's coming onto the skin. And it becomes on the skin of his body, and now he describes this as a leprous sore. Uh, a leprous sore. This would how would you describe this? A leprous sore can be described as a, a wound, a wound or a disease uh, of the of the skin, of the skin. In short, uh, some people will call it leprosy. This chapter 13 talks about this type of malignant skin disease. Uh, and it seems to be prevalent in, in those days. Uh, I think uh, the disease itself has been contained here in Malaysia. We used to have a place in Sungai Bulo. Uh, called the leprosy center. And so people with leprosy, which I have seen before, it actually eats into the flesh itself, right? Uh, and so the, the law of leprosy comes in this way, that this person shall be brought to Aaron the priest, 
or to one of his sons, the priest. So remember, Aaron would be the high priest. The Well, right now we only have two sons of Aaron because two of them died. And they are priests. And the priest shall examine. Uh, and this is the, the key word. Uh, this word examine is actually our normal word called see. So we could call it inspect. Okay. He has to look at this particular uh, elevation, uh, this particular mark. This word saw would be this uh, naga. Naga here. Um, Naga here would be the 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 leprous saw, right? This is the leprous saw. So this particular leprous saw on the skin of the body, it's actually on the skin. It can be only seen on the skin. It's not inside. So it's something that is very visible. That's why it talks about examination by the eye. And if the hair on the saw has turned white, uh, and this is very peculiar, right? If the hair of, has turned white and the saw appears to be deeper than the skin of his body, then it is deemed to be a leprous saw. Now, what does that mean? So let me try to draw it out this way. If we have the skin and if the patch is just a small bump, it could be a mosquito bite, right? However, if the skin is there and then we have a, a bump that is much bigger and you can feel that it's, it's deeper under the skin, there is a, a lump or something like that, right? Now, this is considered a leprous sore, right? A leprous sore. Uh, something which is to do with the, the there's something underneath the skin uh, that is a problem, right? That, that is what it means. And so if that is the case, that you can see that it is deeper, deeper in this case would be uh, way below the skin. That, that, that would be something that you can maybe see. I'm not sure, right? Uh, and, and you know that it's not just a skin type of uh, uh, activity. Then it's considered a leprosaur because it looks white and the hair has already turned white. Then the priest shall examine him. Again here, the word examine is to see or inspect, and then shall pronounce him unclean. Uh, this is the law of leprosy, that this person is unclean. It's, it's in the same category of uh, the previous chapter where we talk about childbirth. The woman is considered unclean, for seven days if it's a male, 14 days if it's a female, and then for another 33 or 66 days thereafter. And so now in chapter 13, if a man has this type of skin uh, anomaly, uh, the spot on the skin is bright, uh, is, is white in color, on the skin of his body and does not appear to be deeper than the skin. And the hair did not turn white, which means that it is still its natural color. Right? Natural color. Which means that there is nothing affecting the hair. And so it is skin deep, hair did not turn white. Then the priest shall isolate the one who has a sore for seven days. This is the concept of quarantine. 
this is a just in case. Uh, let's put him aside because uh, the idea here is this. Isolation means he has to be kept alone. And just to see whether it is more than a normal sort. And the priest shall examine him. Another time we see is to see him, to look at him on the seventh day. And if the sore appears as it was, and the sore has not spread on the skin, then the priest shall isolate him another seven days. It's like a medical doctor progress. Doesn't look that it is spreading, but it has not improved. And then the priest shall look at him again on the next seven days. And if the saw has faded, now this word in verse 6, to fade uh, means it grow dim. Grow dim. What does that mean, grow dim? So if there is a saw, normally it will be very red. And so when it says it has faded or grow dim, it means that it is not so red. Not so red. And the saw has not spread on the skin, meaning the saw itself is healing. Then the priest shall pronounce him clean. Right? That, that is important for us to see. It is only a scab, meaning it's a, it's a little boil. Uh, it's a little boil uh, because that, that's what it means. It's a little eruption, a little boil that came out, uh, maybe through some toxic of the skin. And so he shall wash his clothes and be clean. So then he will be pronounced clean. But if this boil should spread all over the skin and the boil gets bigger, Right, And after he has been seen by the priest for his cleansing, he shall be seen by the priest again. If the priest sees that the scab, this little boil, which we are still talking about the same thing here, has indeed spread on the skin. Now the idea of spreading is, you know, it, it gets bigger. Uh, it covers more skin area. And that's the meaning of spreading. Okay, If that happens, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean, declares it as leprosy. Verse 8, this is a skin disease. A skin disease. Now, this is particular because this skin disease can spread very easily. Uh, and, and, and so it requires careful treatment and careful isolation. Okay. Verse 9. When this is on a person, then he alone shall be brought to the priest. The priest shall look at him, and in, if indeed if the swelling on the skin is white, the hair has turned white, and there is a spot, a bright spot of raw flesh in the swelling, then it looks like an old leprosy on the skin of his body. The priest shall pronounce him unclean and shall not isolate him, for he is unclean. Now, in this case, because it is already an old leprosy, an old wound, and so he is unclean, but there is no need to isolate because it's not active. That is what it means. It's not active. Verse 12, if this particular skin disease uh, it, it sprouts out. The break out here means it blooms. 
it blooms or it buds, you know, like in flower budding. So if it buds, so it means that if all over the skin you've got these little boils, the leprosy covers all of the skin of the one who has a sore from his head to his foot, wherever the priest looks or sees, wherever he can see or inspect, then the priest shall consider. Now this idea of consider is really to look carefully. Interesting in Hebrew, uh, th there's no Hebrew word for consider. Consider is also looking. Okay? It's also looking and to look carefully. right? And indeed, if the leprosy has covered all his body, he shall pronounce him clean who has the sore. Now, this is interesting. Uh, if you have started to get it, then you are unclean. If you have been fully covered, uh, it means that the, 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 the disease has completely turned the person white. Then he is clean. But when raw flesh appears on him, 14, raw flesh means flesh that is alive. Now remember in Hebrew, it is very visual. So if you look at flesh that is raw, raw means it has open wounds. Whenever you have open wounds, you are unclean. And the priest shall examine the raw flesh and pronounce him to be unclean. For raw flesh is unclean. It is leprosy. And this is the time where it will spread. But if the raw flesh changes and turns white again, he shall come back to the priest and the priest shall examine. Remember, examine is look at him. And if the saw has turned white in color, white means pale, there is no more pigmentation. Then the priest shall pronounce him clean, who has the saw. He is clean because the, the disease called leprosy is no longer active. No longer active. Verse 18. If the body develops a boil. A boil is an inflamed spot. Okay? Uh, on the skin. Uh, and Now in this case, it says the it's in the skin and it is healed. And in the place of a boil, there comes a white swelling or a bright spot, reddish white. It, it's very interesting because now everything is all visual. Remember, in, in, the, in the days of Moses, uh, in, the, in the old days, you don't have x-ray, they don't have um, microscopes, they don't test the, the, the skin and, and all this. So it is very much on the priest to inspect. Inspect means to look at it. If the boil is healed, meaning there's no more inflammation, but in the same place, there is a white swelling or a bright spot, reddish white, then it shall be shown to the priest. And if when the priest sees it, it appears Deeper than the skin. The, the, the concept is this. It's not on the skin, but it's under the skin as well. And the hair has turned white. This will be unclean. Why? Because it's active leprosy. It is a leprous sore which has broken out of the boil. It starts from a boil, but now it has become really bad. But if the priest looks at it, and indeed there's no white hair, meaning... The hair color is the same as the original on the person. And the boil is actually on the skin only and has faded. 
Then the priest shall isolate him for seven days. So it's always this seven days thing of quarantine. And if it should spread all over the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean because it is active. It's a leprosy. It's a leprous sore. But if the bright spot stays in one place, it doesn't spread, it doesn't go anywhere else. And now it has become a scar of a boil. Then the priest shall pronounce him clean. So it is important for the priest to see whether it is a scar, it is just a boil, or it is active. It cannot be determined. You put him in isolation. Or if it's spreading, then you know that it is leprosy. Uh, if the hair turned white, it's confirmed. Right? If there is raw skin, don't touch. So verse 24, if the body receives a burn on its skin by fire, this is all skin problem, right? If the skin has a burn, its skin has a scar, okay, by fire, caused by burning, and the raw flesh, remember we talked about raw flesh, it means that the skin has broken. Okay? The skin has broken. It becomes a bright spot, reddish, white, or white. The, the, trick, the, 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 the trick is about white in color. Then the priest shall look at it carefully and check if the hair has turned white. And then check whether this particular burn or scar of the raw skin is deeper now, no, notice it appears, it's, everything is about visual appearance, okay? Visual, we look at it, whether it is deeper than the skin. If it is, leprosy has broken out in the burn. Therefore, the priest shall pronounce him unclean. Don't touch him. Basically, whenever you see unclean, don't touch. It would be a leprous sore. Basically, that's what it means. But if the priest examines it, and indeed there are no white hairs on the bright spot, meaning the hair that is there is still the original color, and the boil, the, the scar, and the growth is just skin deep, and it is fading away, meaning the red has become more like skin tone again, the priest shall isolate him for seven days, and this is a just-in case. After seven days, the priest shall examine him on the seventh day. And if he has spread all over the skin, then he is unclean. It is a leprous sore. But if the bright spot stays in one place, there is no more budding. It doesn't grow anywhere else. It did not spread on the skin, but it's faded towards a skin color. Then it is a swelling that's caused by the burn. The priest shall pronounce him clean. It is a scar from the burn. So it appears that in those days, God wants them to be very clear to eliminate all leprosy. Now, next one is 29. If a man or woman has a sore on the head or the beard, what is so peculiar about the head or the beard. The reason for the head or the beard is because these are the parts of the body that is usually covered with hair. That, that's the reason why this is a special category. Usually it's covered with hair, but there is a saw, right? A saw that the hair is covering, whether it's a beard area or the head area. Then the priest shall look at the sore and if indeed appears deeper than the skin. Now this is easier because the chin area and the, the, the facial area where the beard is or the hair area, the skin is actually very thin. And if now you can see, because there's lots of hair, if the hair is now thin yellow hair, there is something that is affecting the follicles of the hair in the boil. 
then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. Because it is starting to show that it is a leprosy of the head or the beard. But if the priest looks at the sore, but it does not appear deeper than the skin, uh, and there is no black hair in it, though the hair has fallen off, then the priest shall isolate the one who has this particular scale. Now, you look at this as a scale. What does it mean? It's a scab. It's, it's like a saw. But we can't tell for sure. So let's isolate him or quarantine him for seven days. Then on the seventh day, the priest shall examine the saw. And if indeed the scale has not spread, the most important is it cannot spread. If it spread, it's dangerous. There is no yellow hair in it. What does it mean, no yellow hair in it? There is no hair that's growing out that is not black in color. That is their standard hair color. And the scale does not appear deeper than the skin. So no yellow hair means safe. There is no toxic underneath that's affecting the, the, the follicles. Uh, the scale does not appear deeper than the skin. It's just on top of the skin. Now he shall shave himself, whether it's a beard, or on the head, but the scale he shall not shave. He shall leave the scale there. And the priest shall isolate the one who has the scale for another seven days. Now, the priest can clearly see the scab. On the seventh day, examine him again. Examine means look, inspect it. And indeed, if this little boil or the scar did not spread over the skin, and it's not deeper than the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him clean. Wash his clothes and be clean. Okay, The washing of the clothes is important because the washing of the clothes will also remove whatever residue. Right? Whatever residue. Now we look at verse 35 onwards. But if the scale should spread over the skin after his cleansing, what was the cleansing when, when you shave your hair or your beard and the scale continues to spread? It now tells the priest that this is active because it's moving. Then the priest shall look at him carefully and if truly the scale has spread over the skin, the sp you don't even need to look for yellow hair. It's bad. It's unclean. But if the scale appears to be at a standstill, it's not doing anything. It's not growing bigger. It's not spreading. And there is black hair grown up in it. Then it means that the scale has already healed because the follicle is back to normal. So the hair color is the way that the priest is told to inspect. He is clean and the priest shall pronounce him clean. Verse 38. If the man or the woman has bright spots on the skin. Again, when he says bright spot, this would be white patches. White patches. On the skin of the body. Again, this is skin disease. Specifically, white, bright spots. Then the priest shall inspect. And interesting, you no, know, the 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 pre the, the word look is see, inspect, and the English translation just likes to vary the words. And indeed, if the white spots are dull white, then it is a white spot that grows on the skin. He is clean. It means that this is not a disease. Now, verse 40. As for the man whose hair has fallen from his head, means that he is boiled, bald, sorry, bald. But he is clean. That is fine. Uh, it also appears that people in those days can drop hair from the head, right? Could be uh, uh, genetic, right? And he whose hair has fallen from his forehead this is the forehead, the front of the head, and it's bald on the forehead. That's okay too. 
he's clean. See, fallen from the head, the, in the, the top of the head, the front of the head. But if there is on the bald head, on the top, or the forehead, a reddish white sore, which you can tell because the head is usually very pale. And you can see reddish white. And there is a sore coming out. It looks like it's leprosy breaking out of his bald head or the forehead. The priest shall examine. Again, this word examine is to look and see and inspect. And if the swelling of the sore is reddish white on his bald head on the top or the forehead in front, then an appearance of leprosy on the skin of the body, check the body as well. He is a leprous man. He is unclean and the priest shall surely pronounce him unclean. His sore is on his head. And so this is leprosy. So it is always teaching the priest how to check for leprosy. Verse 45, now the leper. The leper would be one who has been pronounced unclean and he actually is de deemed to have the disease. Whom the sore is, the coat shall be torn and head shaven. Uh, he shall cover his moustache and cry unclean, unclean, and he shall be unclean. Why does he need to cry? He needs to cry unclean so that the people around him would know to avoid him. And the word used is unclean, meaning don't come to me. All the days he has a saw, he shall be unclean. He is unclean and he shall dwell alone, and his dwelling shall be outside the camp. And this is quarantine, isolation. Not with people, but away. And this has been how the Bible has been teaching to treat uh, leprosies, uh, the, the discover leprosy, and also handle people who have this disease called lepers. And uh, they shall be outside the camp, away from people. That, that's, that's also how we did it in Sunai Bulo. Now we have a law concerning the clothing that the lepers wear. If a garment has leprous plate in it, whether it's wool or linen, whether it's in the, the warp, uh, verse 48, uh, this would be uh, in the, the woven material. Okay, the woven material. The, or the woof of the linen. What is the woof of the linen? The woof is in the Cross stitch, right? Uh, the the I think I think it's called the cross stitch of the linen or the wool, whether in leather or anything made of leather. If the plate is greenish or reddish in the garment or in the leather, whether in the the woven part or the cross stitch part, basically both of this, the warp and the wolf is talking um, about the same thing. Or in anything made of leather, it is a leprous plate and shall be shown to the priest. The priest shall look at the plate, isolate, which has plague for seven days, examine it again on the seventh day. If the plague has spread in the garment, meaning it is active, whether it's in the, the threads or in the leather, inside the leather, leather would be animal skin, the plague is an active leprosy, then it is unclean. What do you do with it? Burn that garment, which is the plague. Whether it's this, 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 or this, or leather. Because active leprosy, you cannot keep it. It must be burned in fire. And we now know that fire destroys uh, leprosy 
play. That's the only way to destroy the material. Now, there is always the if. If the plague has not spread in the garment, whether warp or wolf or made of leather, then the priest shall command that they wash it and isolate for another seven days. After washing and isolate, check again. Give it seven days, right? And if the plague has not changed its color, it did not spread, but the color is still there, remember? You see, the color is still there. It means that it is still unclean and you shall burn it because it is continuing to eat away whatever it has infected with this damage. Verse 56, if indeed the plague has faded after washing, the color has gone away, he shall tear it out of the garment uh, in our plain daily, today's language, cut it out. Cut out that piece, right? But if it appears again in that garment, whatever that may be, it is spreading, burn it. So the principle is to be on the safe side, I think we should burn. Huh? But if you wash the garment and it disappears, you wash it a second time and you'll be clean. So you're just confirming whether there is plague in it active or not. So last verse, this is the law, the Torah of the leprous plate in the garment or anything made of leather to pronounce clean or unclean. This whole chapter speaks about first uh, examining uh, under what condition, look at the hair, uh, is it spreading? Is it more than just skin deep? Is it below the skin? You know, all of these are all what they call the law of leprosy. How to treat and deal with the skin disease. Uh, and I think that it is important because this disease itself, if not governed well, could actually wipe out the whole of Israel. And so God gave them this law or, or instruction or direction to the priest. And notice, only Aaron and his sons has the authority to pronounce clean or unclean. And this is important because they eventually will have to be able to see. And why does the priest do that? Very simple. So let, let me go back. When he says clean and unclean, it always has to do with sacrifice. And who should know what is clean and unclean best? The priests. Because God holds the priests to do the right thing before God as they serve God. Now in the previous chapter, the two sons of Aaron lit up strange fire, a fire of offering of incense that God never told them to do, and they were killed. And so this is what we are told. Those people who serve God in this particular capacity called priests is held to a higher accountability. And number two, they need to be very well versed with these things called diseases especially contagious diseases like skin disease, leprosy in this case, so that the, the whole, number one, the people, the children of Israel is protected so that the, the person who has the disease is isolated. And number two, that the priests themselves do not accidentally, right? Do not accidentally uh use anything unclean by the lepers for sacrifice. And that would be disastrous. And that is why God expects the, 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 uh, that Aaron and his sons to be able to tell whether it's active, 
is not active. It's new or it's old. What about the garments? Is it infected? Is it not? And all these are all done, if you notice, visually. There is no scientific chemical tests. And so the only thing you can do about this is isolation and leave it until the person has the disease in its tail end that is not spreading anymore. And then, then the leper will be pronounced clean and he can now mingle with the rest of the people. Otherwise, he should call out to be unclean so that people can stay away and know not to touch him. And with this, we end chapter 13. Any questions? Okay, should be straightforward. So I'll see you tomorrow with chapter 14.